Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, may I help you? Hello,、uh, is this the right place for me to register to study foreign languages? Yes, it is. May I have your name, please? Vijay. My family name is Paresh. Vijay Paresh. Okay. Do you have a telephone number? Yeah, nine zero nine two four six seven. Thank you. Now, which language would you like to learn? We offer French, Italian, Cantonese, Mandarin, Spanish, Portuguese.、Uh, I'd like to learn Spanish, please. Okay. Our classes are conducted in lots of different places. We have classrooms in the city and here in this building. What's this building called? This is Building A. I work near here, so it'd be best to study in Building A. What time do you want to come to lessons? They go on for three hours, and they start at ten a.m., four p.m., and six p.m. I wish I could come to the daytime lessons, but I can't. So six p.m. please. That's our most popular time, of course.、Um, have you ever studied Spanish before? No, I haven't. We describe our classes by level and number. Your class is called Elementary One. Okay.、Uh, when will classes start? Elementary One begins.、Uh, just a minute.、Uh, it begins on August ten. Great. Now, what else do I have to do? Now listen, and answer questions eight to ten. I'm sorry, VJ. What were you saying? I wanted to know what else I had to do. Of course. Please go to the building on the other side of Smith Street. I want you to go to the reception area first. It's just inside the door on the left as you enter from Smith Street. Give them this form. Okay. Do I pay my fees there? No, but the fees office is in the same building. Go past the escalators, and you'll see a games shop. It's in the corner. The fees office is between the games shop and the toilets. Thanks.、Uh, where can I buy books? The bookshop is opposite the lifts. It's right next to the entrance from Robert Street. Your offices are spread out. Not as badly as they used to be. By the way. We offer very competitive overseas travel rates to our students. Oh, I'd like to look into that. Of course, the travel agency is at the Smith Street end of the building, in the corner next to the insurance office. Thank you very much. Bye. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good afternoon. I'm applying for a master's program at the University of Exeter in the UK. I'm planning to register for the IELTS exam at your centre next month. I have some questions I'd like to ask you before I register, if that's okay. Certainly. Would you be taking the academic module? I think so, but I'll have to contact the university just to make sure. You'll probably need the academic because most universities don't accept the general training, and anyway, the procedures to register for the exam are the same for both the general and the academic modules. Good. My first question is whether I sit all parts of the exam on the same day. I don't live here, you see, and for me, it would be more convenient to do all the papers on the same day. Hmm. Unfortunately, the speaking part is scheduled for Thursdays, and reading, writing, and listening tests take place on Saturdays. We can't change the days, I'm afraid. Hmm. That's a pity. Well, never mind. What sort of documents do I need to bring in order to register? You'll have to fill in the IELTS application form and bring an ID. A copy of your ID and two passport-sized photos on a white background. Will any ID do? We only accept original passports and national IDs. That's good to know. Did you say that reading, writing, and listening are scheduled for Saturday? That's right. 
Will I get a break in between the papers? I'm afraid there aren't any breaks between the papers. Each paper takes an hour to complete, so it's three hours straight through. You'll first do listening and then reading, followed by the writing test. This is a standard requirement from Cambridge. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. OK, and how soon after the test can I pick up my results? It takes 13 calendar days for the results to be processed. Can you let me know how much it is and the form of payment? The examination fee is 200 US dollars. You can pay by credit or debit card. We also accept cheques. We only accept cash as a form of payment in exceptional circumstances. And one last question. Can I mail you the application documents? Certainly. You can send all the documents by registered mail to our address. 47 Clover Place, New Rochelle, New York. Could you spell New Rochelle for me, please? Certainly. N E W R O C H E L L E. Could I have the zip code as well? Sure. Our zip code is 10806. Thanks. You can also email us at iinquiry at examsmail.com or phone us at 325-9082. I think that's all. Thank you very much for all the information. Bye. You're welcome. Goodbye. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Right, let's move on to the beaches here, which are absolutely beautiful. You do have over a hundred to choose from. They're mostly sandy beaches and they vary from the largest, which is two and a half kilometres long, to tiny sandy coves. But there are a few that I'd really recommend you to visit. So, looking at this pamphlet, first of all, there's Bandela Beach. This beach is one kilometre away from the old fishing village of Bandela, which is a beautiful spot. If you park in the car park behind it, there's a small path which leads down to the bay. It's very pretty because the whole beach is backed by pine trees, so it's very sheltered. The beach itself is very clean and the water is shallow and safe. That, together with the soft sand, make it an ideal beach for children and non-swimmers. Um, a little further round the coast, again to the east, in the eastern corner of the island, is the spectacular Dapolata Beach, which is basically a long inlet. The land around this beach is marshland. It's all marsh, and there's a stream which winds through it, and the stream goes into the sea, and the beach has lovely pale gold sand. Access to this beach is quite tricky, and not for the less energetic. You have to go down a long flight of steps, 190 to be exact. But you'll be relieved to know that there's also a road which winds down to a car parking area. When you're level with the sea, there is a handful of shops and bars, and you can hire some beds and umbrellas. Continuing round the island, just past the tip of Calm, is the next beach I'd suggest you visit, and this is San Get. Why? Because there isn't a beach longer than this on the island. If you want to know, it's exactly two and a half kilometres long, and that's a bonus because it means it never gets overcrowded. It has golden sand and clear blue water shelving into the sea. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. It has golden sand and clear blue water shelving into the sea. There are several beach restaurants to choose from and water sports are available when the water is calm. But check first. This beach operates a flag system as the sea can get rough and you should always swim between the flags. 
There's a large car park which gives you easy access to the eastern end of the beach, but the western end is much quieter and more wild as it is harder to reach. Blanaka is another popular beach just in the northwest corner of the island. It has incredibly white sand and sparkling water. There is ample car parking here and plenty of bars and restaurants. Blanaka has white cliffs all around it and for those of you who'd like a little more to do than just lazing on the beach, there are caves here which you can explore in the cliffs and you can also dive into the water from rock platforms along the side of the cove. Well, my final recommendation for today is Dissidor. Now, this beach isn't quite as easy to get to as the others I've talked about. It's quite a remote little beach tucked away here next to Blanaka. You can reach Dissidor by a steep slope which goes over some sandbanks. The beach itself is small and pretty with reddish coloured sand and some stony areas on its eastern side. Despite being quite small, the bathing is good and you can also go fishing here from the rocks at either side. It's a good idea to take some food and drink with you if you decide to go here as there's only one little bar which isn't always open. So, that should give you plenty of ideas to choose from over the next two weeks. And if you have any further questions... Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. OK, I'd like to keep this meeting as brief as possible, as I'm sure we all have things to do. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. This is the first of many field trips you'll be going on, so there are a few rules I'd like to make clear now. Most importantly, I want you all to remember that simply because you are leaving the college does not mean that you are not studying. This is an essential part of your course and should be treated as such. There will be two assignments for you to complete whilst you are there, and some extension work you will be expected to do over the weekend, so I suggest you all pay attention on the day. Moving on, remember that we are going to a salt marsh and must dress appropriately. High-heeled shoes and t-shirts are not what I consider appropriate. You need good footwear, preferably boots, and you should bring a waterproof jacket as the weather is unpredictable. It would also be a good idea to bring a change of clothes. There is a chance you will get wet, and a three-hour return journey in damp clothes is nobody's idea of fun. We will be on the marsh from about 10 o'clock to about 4, so you will be given a light lunch. However, if you want to bring any snacks with you, then please feel free to do so, although we will be stopping for dinner on the way home. Now this is the fourth time the college has been to Park Drive Salt Marsh, and so far we have never lost a student. <laughs> However, remember that there are 28 people going, and if you are late, you will be keeping myself and your colleagues waiting and at that time in the morning you will not find me very forgiving. Please try to arrive a few minutes before seven. If you are not here on the hour, you risk being left behind. For those of you who are being collected in the evening, you can expect to be back here between 8.30 and 9pm. But do warn whoever may be coming for you that the traffic is unpredictable and it may well be later. Before you go, I'll hand out your assignment papers and briefly explain what you have to do. Now, on the first page, all you are required to do is identify the flora and fauna on the page and find an example in the salt marsh. As I told you on Monday, you will need a camera for this. I recommend one of those disposable cameras rather than something more valuable, as the marsh can get very dirty. Now on page 2, you'll be looking more at the bird life on the marsh. You should be able to see what you have to do for this assignment, but there will be plenty of time on the way there to ask any other questions. Well, we'll stop there and I'll see you all on Friday morning. Oh, before you go, just a word of caution. The plants are there to be seen and photographed only. Remember that this is a protected site and we will have to get permission for this trip. If there are any problems, we may not be allowed to go again, and you will be spoiling the opportunity for other students. OK, if you have any questions, come and see me later today or tomorrow. You now have half a minute to check your answers.